What's up guys, it's Blaze here. Before we get started with this video, I just want to say that the audio is a little bit iffy and so you're going to get a few audio artifacts and it's going to be a little bit messy throughout the video. Um, it hasn't affected the whole thing, but I have a feeling that because I recorded both this video and the next one that's coming up in the same day with the same audio settings, it might have a bit of an impact, but I'll see what's going to happen when it comes to editing them. So yeah, ju I just want to make sure that you guys know that uh, there is going to be, there are going to be a few audio issues in this video, um, but please do uh, learn from it. I hope that you guys do learn from it. And hopefully if not in the next video, then the one after that, where we go into a completely new section, we, I, will be able to fix that audio issue there. So thank you very much, guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now. What's up, guys? It's Blaze from Funbox here, and let's continue on with our attack menu and targeting system for our turn-based RPG combat. We're actually almost finished, so... Uh... <sighs> All right, so in this video, what we're going to focus on is maybe I can get the first half hopefully in 15 minutes-ish, um, of the manager code. So in the video before, what we did was we added a new variable. And in the video before that, if you guys haven't seen it, we added these three new events. So what I'm going to do first is I'll open these up, I'll maximize them, and drag them over into the manager window. So if you guys didn't know this, you can actually grab a tab, a code tab, and you can combine it with all the other stuff. Now, why it doesn't open up grouped events, have no idea. <laughs> but uh, that's just something that we'll have to work with. All right, so with the manager, what we're going to do, first thing that we're going to do is we are going to add three new variables in. The first one will be the list of viable targets and the other two will hold the IDs of our UI layers. So let's do that now. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have here. We have a new list and we've called this targets. Now the difference between targets, selected targets and units is that targets here, I've commented it here, is it's a list of potential targets that we can pick from. The units are all of the units that you've spawned into the game, all right? Eventually, the selected targets will also be a list, but we're not going to cover that in this section just yet. We just want to be able to attack one unit at a time. So units, one, one more time, let me reword that a bit. Units are all of the characters that you spawn into your scene, whereas the targets are only the ones that you can target. So basically, all of the units minus, generally speaking, minus the currently selected character, okay? All right, we have targeting false. We already covered that in the last video. And then we have these two. These two, I've named them base UI and target UI. And basically, the job of the manager here, apart from unit management and the flow of the game, or rather part of the flow of the game is turning on and off specific UI layers. Now, you can have your UI on a, on a sequence. That's totally fine. You can have that. Um, but for us, because we want to keep it simple, we're just going to turn on and off these objects. <clears throat> okay, so just keep that in mind. So what we're doing is with what layer get ID does is it finds the layer let me just open up the room. It finds the layer in the room with the same name, and then it stores the ID of that in this variable. So it's much easier to access later on. All right, so that's that done. Because we created a list, we need to go into the cleanup event and we need to add in another DS list destroy. So let's do that now. All right, so that's done. Pretty simple, if the targets list does exist, then we need to destroy that to make sure that we free up the memory. All right, that's pretty much done. We're going to skip the global left released for now um, because we don't have the actual code 
just yet. We don't have the attack code written out yet, and so we're going to leave this one to last. All right, let's skip over to the step event, and this is where we are going to do a lot of writing. So let's go all the way to the top here. And for the first thing that we're going to do in the initialize phase is we are going to turn off all of the UI layers. Sounds weird, but just, just stick with me with this, okay? So let's put the space in. And just like before, I'm gonna jump ahead and I'll explain it line by line. All right, so let's take a look at these lines one by one. We have layer set visible, target UI, and we're gonna set it to false. In other words, set invisible. And then we have to deactivate the instances. So what that means is, what this line means is that on every layer, on every instance layer, what actually happens is, just because it's invisible doesn't mean that the instances on that layer are disabled. Just something to keep in mind, okay? So that's what we're doing for the target UI. We're turning it invisible and we're disabling any interaction that we have with it. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the base UI invisible as well, but we won't have it disabled. It's because it's right at the start. Um, I, can't, I found a bug uh, where it wouldn't turn the base UI back on. So I'm not sure why that's the case. I think it might be because of it being the first step event and it runs into conflicts with other stuff. If you want to, you can just copy this line here, paste it underneath and change to base UI to see what will happen. Um, but for me, I've run into that bug. Not sure exactly what's going on there. So I'm just, it's, yeah, it's much easier to avoid it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll find out a way to fix it. But for now, just have this one line for the base UI. Just turn it invisible for now. All right. We're not done with uh, the step event just yet. We need to go down into start turn. And down here for allow input, we're going to call one of our user events and then allow for input. Okay, so let's just, uh, let's do that now. Okay, so let's have a look at it here. First, we're going to check if allow input is false. And if it is, we need to make it true. And then we're going to run event user one. Right now, that event user is empty. Um, and I'm looking at the at my clock right now, and it looks like we might be running out of time. So we might do that in the next video, just so I can explain how these events work a little more. Uh, and so let's let's keep going though. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to allow for input and then we're going to run event user one. What event user one will do is it will turn on and off the base layer. Okay, just as a sneak peek, right? Just as a preview for the next video. It's responsible for turning on and off the base UI layer. All right then, let's move on to the wait phase. The wait phase, we're gonna do a whole bunch of manual things. Although truth be told, you could just put this into another user event. Um, but uh, for us, we'll just put it into, just as raw code, into the wait phase right here. And I'm gonna put it right underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna jump ahead again, and then we'll go through it line by line. All right, so let's take a look at this. When our selected character is finished, they're done, what we're going to do is run event zero. Event zero, again, another sneak peek, is responsible for doing one thing, and that's flipping allow input between true and false. And then we're going to disable and make invisible all of our UI layers. So our target UI as well as the base UI. And that's basically it for the wait phase. Let's move on down to the next one, which is the process phase here. So in the process phase, what we're going to do is we're going to go through each and every single unit that we have and flip, flip all of their draw target variables to false. So we're gonna run a for loop and then we'll do that from there. Okay, so I didn't mention this before, but we also need to set global targeting to false here. Um, you know, truth be told, this this line here might be a bit redundant, but just keep it in there for now. 
at least for testing purposes. And if you, while you're testing out the code, once we get to it, feel that you can get rid of this line and it won't break, then it's fine to keep it there. All right, so for what we're going to do is for every single unit, like I said, is for every unit in the units list, we're gonna run through it and we're going to set the draw target variable that they have, which is this variable right here. We're going to set it to false so that just in case we have a targeting um, sprite drawn, it's going to turn that off. All right then. So that's it for the process phase. We don't need to do anything for check finish, but we do need to do some stuff for check turn. We need to do a whole bunch of resetting and basically, yeah, what end turn is supposed to do is just reset a whole bunch of variables. So let's do that now. <laughs> it's a little less uh, complex compared to the other stuff, but all we're going to do here is take our targets list and we're just gonna clear it. Eventually we'll be doing more stuff like um, turning on and off a bunch of UI stuff as well. But for now, let's just keep it simple. We're just gonna clear the targets list because we don't want to, we don't have a way to clear it yet. So strictly speaking at the end of the unit turn would be maybe the best time. Maybe it should be in process, but what I've found is that it's it works the smoothest, not the fastest, but the smoothest in and turn. Okay, so just keep that there for now. You can always play around with your version, you know, see what works, see what doesn't. Uh, but for me, this is what works uh, the smoothest. All right, so that's it for the step event. We can save that out. And I think I'll leave the video here because I, the next, the next step would be to fill in the user events. So user event zero, one, and two, and then, and you know what? Doesn't matter, we'll do that now because then at least we'll be done with the manager completely. So user event zero, what does it do? Like I said before, it, uh, it just flips the allow input um, variable from false to true. So really it's just one line actually. So we can get rid of that and we can just write the one line. Okay, so if you've never, if you've never seen a boolean you can use this for other things but usually you'll see it for booleans um, is if you see your boolean variable equals not the boolean if you see that sort of thing it basically means it's a shorthand way of saying if it is true set it to false and if it's false set it to true right we can compress that entire if else statement to just one line here. Now you might think that why can't we just put this into the step event where we where we would need um, allow input? Uh, that's that's possible. You can do that, um, but just in case you have other objects and other things in your game that requires this particular line of code, it's better to have it in an event rather than calling it straight out. Okay, so just just keep that in mind for why we have an entire event dedicated to just one line of code. Let's move on to user event one. Now, like I said, the user event one is designed to be the the controller for oops, the controller for the base UI layer. So let's get rid of this and I'll put the code in and we'll go through it one by one. What we're going to do is first we're going to check if the base UI is visible. And if it is, we're going to make it invisible. Otherwise, if the base UI is invisible, we're then going to make it visible, all right? So that's all that this uh, event one does. Event two is basically the same, although we won't be using it just yet. Event two is almost the same, so I can just copy this over and paste it into event two, but instead of the base UI, we are going to change it to target UI. So instead of base UI, target UI, just like that. And we can take this, copy it, paste it. I've broken my rule of copy pasting code. The only reason why I say that is because a lot of beginners will blindly 
copy and paste code, not knowing what it does, and then if it breaks, they don't know what what to do about it. So that's why I discourage copy pasting code. Um, and yet here I am making tutorials on YouTube. Anyway, user event two is designed for the target UI. So it's the same logic. It's going to check if it's visible. If it is, turn it off. And if it's invisible, you turn it on. All right. So that's it for the parent, uh, not the parent, the manager minus the global left release because that one's a uh, that one's a little more complicated to take care of but uh, we're done for the most part with the manager so the next one we will actually work with writing out the functions and then the last step will be this particular button here the left mouse released anyway guys that's all from me thank you so much for watching if you guys haven't already i do hope that uh, you will subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications as well. If you guys like the video, please do tell me by clicking the like button down below. And of course, questions, comments, leave them so that I can see them. Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.